What's up out there? Guess I can't really say we are back with more Melver Idol Hardcore, but we're back with Melver, more Melver Idol Hardcore, and this is Generation 2, episode, uh, as much as it pains me to say, episode 1. Uh, did a little bit of thinking over the last few days on, on how I died and everything. Uh, I think I, I was definitely asleep. The boss of that uh, infernal um, stronghold puts you to sleep, and I was definitely asleep at that point because I remember the red bar going across, and I know my hit points was down. You know, I took a decent amount of damage, and then I'm pretty sure I was on fire, so I was taking a little tick from the burning damage, but I couldn't figure out. I just assumed, I guess, that I took another massive hit, and... Um, the burning damage might have pushed over the edge or something. I wasn't quite sure. And then I got this comment here. And as soon as I saw this comment, I was like, I know exactly what you're talking about. Because I do remember that in the patch notes. It's one of those things you read the you read the patch notes and you're like, okay, that's cool. And then you kind of move on. I hadn't encountered anybody that did sleep or stun or anything for a while. And it just didn't dawn on me that that was what could be and as soon as i saw this comment i was like yep and here is the reference from the patch notes so it was definitely because you take an additional 30 percent damage um the web page that i was looking at is called can i idle this i think something along those lines i'll put a link up here or down in the description if i can remember to do it um it's a cool page it shows you everything but i'm guessing they're probably not totally up to date with these changes um, it gives you a good idea. I really should not have done that dungeon without holding enter. I should have done it. Uh, I only needed to complete the thing like five to ten times because once you've got the infernal cores out of it, you never need to go back. So I really should have just idled it. Or not idled, but I should have manually kind of ran the dungeon um, once or twice, seen how it went. And then just kept my eye on it. And I, that was my bad. I really just wasn't paying attention. I thought I could idle it. And I obviously couldn't. So that was Badass. He is dead and gone. We are now working on Lil Badass. He is now back. Uh, ready to avenge his daddy. So um, I decided to run right back into a hardcore um character i am going to start an adventure character this weekend i just need to get some time to sit down and i want to record actually creating the character in the first few steps this one i just started throwing stuff together i'm like i can throw this and let it idle in the background the adventure mode i've not really looked at anything in it so i don't know the rules of it i know there are certain things that you can do at certain times and it's kind of restrictive so i really want to save that one for when i have time to sit down and do a proper video for it I mean, I probably could do one now, but I'd rather get this done and just kind of show you where we're going on this character. I don't know that I'm going to do twice a week with this and adventure mode. That'd be between two and four videos a week, depending on how I do things. I don't really want to double these up either, switching between characters. So we may have some individual episodes. We may get some things pushed together. I'm not totally sure how this looks yet, but... Um, I may do like a recap for all three characters. I don't know. Uh, we're going to see how this shakes out. You know, as much as I do at this point. So let's dive into little badass here. Uh, I started off with this one. Very first thing you do is wood cutting. Boom. I just started rolling with it and you can see right where I'm at now. I pretty much did a bunch of, uh, normal trees, I kind of worked back and forth with fishing for a little bit because I was trying, I've upgraded the fishing rod a little, I think I've upgraded this. I want to say I have. Yeah, I've definitely upgraded that because I think it starts at level five or 10 or something like that. 10. I'm guessing 10 because that's where this is. So I've put a few upgrades into these. Um, I kind of regret some of the upgrades that I've done. Like I, in the last hardcore, uh, I think I pretty much used fishing for making money. And in that hardcore series, agility and summoning weren't here yet. So I didn't have these to work on. And as I kind of looked at this, I was starting to go down that path of, well, I'm going to get wood cutting up to where I can get fishing to fund things. And I'm going to take the money from fishing and go back into wood cutting and kind of going back and forth with that. But then I kind of looked at this and I thought, man, there is agility in this game. So I thought, you know what? That was kind of a waste of money. I could have been spending that money 
or the gold that I get from the cutting trees into agility. And I've decided that's what I'm going to do. Agility is a real solid money maker in my opinion. So I really want to push this as far as possible, as early as possible. And you can see we're already up to level 55. Uh, my hardcore character died yesterday and I pretty much started this yesterday, not very long after he died. I was like, you know what? I can just start cutting trees and just let it sit and idle and decide on things later. So I did that, bounced back and forth with fishing for a little bit. It, your first levels, like I'm within a day, I'm up at level 62 wood cutting and I'm already at 55 agility. So it's not hard to get those first several levels. Um, where agility starts becoming a problem is that it's a money sink and you end up having it like this obstacles, 500,000 gold plus a bunch of mats that you need to get. And I've decided I'm going to go with this one because it's only going to take some bones, small bones. That's no big deal, but I'm going to get 15% gold from this thing and some extra agility interval, which makes me more money. The XP isn't going to be as good. I'm going to lose some of this with these uh, negative modifiers, but I'm actually okay with that. If you notice, I am already at level 55. I'm going to be level 60 before maybe even 70 uh, because I'm not going to get time to do the combat portion of this until probably tomorrow or Sunday. So I'm going to let this thing run and see how much cash I get, see how much, how far of a level that I get uh, because the higher the level I am with this agility, the better off I'm going to be. And I don't mind that I'm behind on things. I think I can do obstacle six. So I'm definitely going to have to get a ton of money for that obstacle. And then, you know, obviously I'm not at seven yet, but we're getting close to seven. So working on obstacle five is going to take a minute, but I'm going to do what I'm going to call threading the needle. I shouldn't say threading the needle, tying a shoelace or lacing shoes. Let's call it that. And what I'm talking about is as I want to get as much agility unlocked as early as possible. I don't necessarily care that I'm at level 99, but I want to get as much of it, as many obstacles unlocked as possible because the threading part um, comes into here. And I'm going to let these dictate um, what I do as far as skills go. So for instance, um, this one here, let's say I want to work on, uh, I don't know, Maybe this one here, chance to preserve resources and skills. That seems reasonable. It's a little less skilling XP. I think I'm okay with that. Uh, I obviously took the one with no requirements because it's the easiest one to pick up. But we'll take this one because it's easy to point out here. This is something I might use because I could use this, the percent chance to save resources. That's cool. I'm going to have to work up thieving and um, cooking, and then we're going to have to get some tomato seeds and some salmon. So we're going to have to do some thieving. Obviously, that's going to take a little while. I would probably get the tomato seeds from the uh, farmer, thieving-wise. And the salmon, I'm going to obviously have to go do some fishing or some combat with something that drops salmon. Um, if we do the fishing route, then we got to cook it, which gets us up to level 20. So that's what I mean about letting this dictate what... Uh, what skills I'm going to work on. So the thread would go through here on this instance. Uh, maybe we go to this one here. I took this to get the extra agility because I want to push this. I want to push the agility skill up pretty high, but maybe we switch over to here when we do fire making because that's, uh, and we'd have to get fire making up a little bit in order to get this one, but that gives fire making XP, which makes it go quicker which means we're going to have to do some wood cutting and get fire making up in, lo in level. So rather than try to go what I think I need, I'm going to let the agility skill obstacles decide where I want to go. Now, obviously, I'm going to be making choices on here. Um, you know, I'll probably be going, well, this is the one we looked at earlier, I guess. Um, this one here. I may switch over to fire making, but I have to get fire making up to level 15. I'm right now doing the agility one because it take it took no requirements, just some cash, and I'm making money getting uh, skill XP off of it, and we're we're good to go. So eventually, I'm going to work on fire making. That's a given. Once I get agility up high enough, I'm going to retool certain obstacles to work towards fire making. And then once we get fire making up to wherever it needs to be, we're going to start 
making other changes to the obstacles. And I think that's how I want to proceed with this just to see how this goes. Like I said, we didn't have agility when I started my other hardcore characters. So this one offers a lot of money. And especially if I can get past these first few obstacles, there's a point where you're starting to make two, three, four, a thousand gold per tick. So in a minute, you can be making a ton of money, especially if you get that signet ring, that thing doubles your, it's like a 100% gold. So if you're making a thousand gold, you're automatically getting 2000 gold. If you have that equipped, plus you get this bonus here that we were looking at with the uh, extra gold. So that doubles again, you know, you're doubling that bonus basically, I think, but you can make a ton of money off of this. I actually bought the, um, there's this red ribbon thing. Um, this, this party hat, it's 2.1 billion gold. I actually got that on my standard account with the signet ring and as many boosts as I could to the, um, I, uh, to, um, agility. I think I also was running the agility potion and that's another thing I want to get that potion up. Here's the problem though. I'd love to get the potions up now, but that means I'd have to stop and do a whole bunch of other things like farming and, you know, get, maybe get thieving up and do a whole ton of things that I'm not really prepared to do yet. I want to get a good financial base under me with agility. And I think that's the way to do it is to push this one up first, get as much cash as possible, and then just sit on that bank note for a little while and see how it goes. Uh, there may be a time when I have to actually stop doing agility. Uh, maybe I hit level 99. Maybe I just, I can't buy the obstacle that I want. So then I have to go and do some other stuff. And that's where um, putting the shoelace in the shoe is going to come in handy or going to come into play because then I'm going to have to pick between what I want and I'm going to have to go work that skill up. Uh, the other thing I'm going to try to do is to work the skills up kind of evenly. Um, not necessarily, you know, I'm going to go from here and get fire making at level 24 and then I'm going to get cooking at 24. What I'm going to do is try to not push too hard on one of these to where it's out of balance with the others. Cause you kind of need them all at the same point, sort of to a degree. Um, and I'm going to try to work summoning in. I've, kind of been disappointed in summoning, but that's at the end game side of it. I think it's very expensive and I don't necessarily see the benefits of it. But that said, uh, I do have the tree cutting done. I, I basically got the first, um, mark and then I created the, t the tablet and then that's it. I just did I, up to level 62 and I'm done with tree cutting. I did not make any more tablets for the thing. I just made what I needed. That's why I'm not even out of level one with this yet. Um, I really need to work this up to level five, but you need cash because you, I had to scrounge up some money to buy the, um, oh, the shards to create to craft this. And these are kind of expensive, especially when you're starting out and you don't have any money, uh, green shards for one. Now, where are we at? 200 gold. And it, <laughs> I'm selling trees for like one or five gold a piece. It took a while to get this built and, and you had to buy like six or eight of them, I think. So that made it even more, but, uh, that's kind of my plan for now is to just go into this with agility. So there may not be much exciting to go with. I'm going to get this video out today or tomorrow, whenever I get time to get it done, um, and post it out and everything. Pretty much what you see is going to, what we're going to be working on for the next foreseeable future is to get agility as far as possible. And then anything that costs, uh, pay the price, so to speak. I think the next thing I want to get before I jump off this topic is auto eat tier one. I definitely want auto eat on because to get a thousand, um, uh, where to go this one. To get 1,000 bones, I'm not going to sit there and try to heal through that. Or I'm, I suppose I could start combat and let it go for a little bit and then stop combat and let the auto heal pick. Well, there is no auto heal. We're in hardcore. So, yeah, I can't do that. I could on my standard account, but uh, we're definitely going to need auto heal and we're definitely going to need some food. So, that's going to mean probably some fishing and then a little bit of cooking to get in there. So, you can see already where all that's going to start. You know, we're going to have to put the shoelace in the different holes here and there to get some of this stuff laid out. So it's going to take a little bit of work. That's what I'm going to be working on. And welcome to the new season uh, or generation. I'm going to call it a generation. I don't, I don't think season works as well with this. I think, uh, 
I said that right. Season doesn't work as well as Generation does. I think Generation is a better way to title this. So that is it for this uh, first episode of the new Hardcore. Um, hopefully we don't have a new, new Hardcore anytime soon. And hopefully I can learn from this, some mistakes and not lose my character so much. So we are done with this episode. Uh, look for the adventure episode to come out soon. And we will catch you on the next one. Take care.